Great to be here. Uh, I think he just called me old, if I heard that introduction right. I do have a bit of gray hair uh, being in the industry a while. Um, it's really a, a pleasure to be here, uh, you know, just sitting here listening to kind of the stories being told and Mike up here on stage. It's, it's really exciting times, and uh, we feel honored to be part of this story of what's happening, this revolution that's happening around, around big data. Um, as he said, I run Greenplum, which was acquired by EMC last year, and uh, it's been a terrific experience for us to uh, have this opportunity to really play a, a big role in developing this, uh, this big data platform. Also, as he mentioned, uh, my background being at Sun, we still, uh, I still consider Scott McNeely a friend and an advisor to our company. And so in the spirit of that, uh, if you know Scott from, from the days that Sun was driving the Internet and Java and the rest of it, he always had kind of his top ten list. And so I thought that was an appropriate format to, uh, to talk about in ten minutes about what, uh, what you should know about, uh, about big data. And certainly being here in New York with David Letterman down the road, this is the, uh, the appropriate format. So we'll have a little bit of fun. Hopefully you get a little information and hear a little bit about, uh, about the story. This is obviously less about Greenplum and EMC and more about collectively what, what all of us are doing in this tremendous opportunity that sits in, sits in front of us. So kind of first off, number 10, big data does not eliminate leadership eras. And if you saw what's happened in Netflix, this is timely, right? So a lot of, a lot of changes in their business model, a, a tremendous company, tremendous leadership, and yet they kind of missed it, right? If you think about the announcements they made, how they bifurcate their business, and how the customers reacted to that. And so even though we're getting a lot of data and, and, and trying to be in tune with the opportunity, it doesn't mean we always get it right from a leadership perspective. And I think this is an important thing we all have to acknowledge. I'm sure they'll get it right. But you know, being in tune, making it collaborative, as we've talked about in this session, is going to be really critical going, going forward. Uh, number nine, big data means you can, can and should leverage social data. I think this, this goes without saying. If you listen to discussions around Hadoop, around social data, it's a data type that's obviously important. It's one of the many streams that are happening. It's something that enterprises are struggling with candidly to kind of tap into. But this big no data notion certainly has to embrace social data. It's a big opportunity in front of us, and we've got to get this right. We're all driving towards that. Number eight, big data requires new tools and technology. And you heard some of, the, uh, some of the people talking about this earlier. And this is something obviously near and dear to our heart. This is something we're very focused on, providing kind of the best platform from an infrastructure on the tools and creating a, a very open tool set, if you will, to really allow these big data applications to, th to thrive and grow out in the marketplace for enterprise and the, and the broader community. But I think the important point here is not just the tools right, or, or the science, if you will. It's also the art. And you heard some of the examples here this morning, the creativity around what you can do with big data. How do we think differently about what we're going to do with big data and how does that transform our business, the enterprise, and the industries and the rest of it? So an important trend here to think about not just the, the tools and infrastructure, but the kind of the, the art that goes with that, the creativity that needs to happen along the way. And certainly we need to, to nourish that. Number seven, big data requires new skills in your workforce. And this is something we've been very focused on, and I think in the broader community is, a, is an important topic that, you know, we've got to think about, just like in the, in the, in the gold rush days, uh, thinking about how do we retool our workforce to take advantage of, of, of big data and the data trends that are emerging. If you saw in, uh, in May, we sponsored the the Data Scientist Forum. And so creating a, a forum and a community of people, not just the data scientists, but the data architects, the business analysts, the data administrators, the executives, that all have to be part of, of this journey that we're on around big data. How do we think about the skills required to go deliver on this mission? And this goes back into the school systems. We're, we're, we're trying to, to help the curriculums in uh, large universities to go develop the skills around the kids that are coming out of schools these days that are thinking about data, 
and, and how do we foster and create this community. So a really important trend that uh, we think is important, not just the technology, but the people side of this. Number six, with big data you can run, but you cannot hide. And so this is the notion, this is not a fad. This is not going away. This is a fundamental transformation that's happening. Every enterprise, every government agency around the globe needs to embrace big data and get on with it. It's really quite that, quite that simple. And I, you know, we're very encouraged to see conferences like these that are reinforcing that, that notion. And I, and I think, you know, in my experience over the last year, it's just been a, a, a huge momentum shift towards big data. I know people are not questioning this now as an important uh, 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 movement, an important uh, enterprise uh, uh, framework that needs to happen across the globe. This is happening. And so now the race is on how do we really, how do we really encourage this to happen and how do we provide the capabilities for this to accelerate. Number five, big data doesn't always quite get it right. And so if you see the caption here, uh, this is a personal experience that iTunes represented or uh, recommended to me that I ought to buy the Willow Smith CD, Whip My Hair. I think they missed that one. I, I, you know, maybe that was my daughter, but I, I don't even think so. I think they, they totally missed this. And it speaks to that there's a lot of data out there, but how do we harness that correctly as we serve our, our customers and employees and, and the rest of it? I, you know, I... And then a, f a friend of mine was mentioning last night that uh, LinkedIn keeps trying to link him in with his ex-wife. I, 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 don't, I, I don't think that, I mean, he knows his ex-wife. I don't think he needs a LinkedIn kind of process for that communications to occur. And I'm sure we all have our experiences here. Number four, uh, big data is the path to competitive advantage. And this is critical. This is what's driving, you know, this is about uh, uh, business and capitalism in some sense competing out in the marketplace. You're all leaders who represent your organization. You want to do good things. You want to compete and win. And I think big data certainly is going to be a differentiator. It's going to be uh, 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 the platform that's going to drive these transformations that are occurring. And so I, I think companies are, are getting that. I think the companies that race forward and the companies not only that serve this but are taking advantage of big data will be the winners going forward. Can't predict what that looks like. But certainly from a competitive advantage perspective, big data is going to create that edge. Number three, big data is bigger than cloud. And so we fundamentally believe this, even though cloud continues on, certainly as we, as we talked about with uh, the company we're a part of, with EMC and VMware investing heavily in not only storage and cloud, we think of cloud as really transforming IT. And we think of of really big data transforming business, right? And so if you just think about cloud being kind of the container, big data is delivering on this mission. That's why it's so profound and, and so important to, to everything we're doing and collectively everything we do to drive this, drive this forward. Number two, big data is transforming industries. And so uh, we started something uh, uh, this past year that we call the Data Hero Award. And so we just put this out there. This wasn't about Green Plum or EMC. It was about who, what kinds of companies and, and people are doing really interesting, profound things with big data. And how do we recognize and celebrate these organizations that are making a difference? And so this one in particular was around energy, Silver Spring Networks that some of you may be familiar with, with kind of the smart metering capability the grid, how do we get more efficient at leveraging data for how these utilities get, get run. And so I think this kind of example is happening in every industry. You heard some of it this morning, financial industries, healthcare, certainly examples. There's going to be people that emerge as leaders leveraging data for competitive advantage in, in industries. And number one, big data is transforming lives. And this is the really exciting part. This isn't just about business. This isn't just about capitalism. This is about how we're changing our life experience. And so this was another Data Hero Award winner around global virus forecasting, predicting the next pandemic, right? And so leveraging data that's going to change our lives. And this is, I think, partly, you know, our, our collective experience of being on a mission 
that really matters, really drives and excites and energizes all the activities that we're talking about at this conference. So it's really exciting. So those are kind of the top 10. Now, what should you do about this? So we tried to kind of summarize this down into the top three steps you should take on your journey to big data analytics. And so first off, uh, invest in people, technology, and your own commitment. This is kind of you know, my personal message to each of you and each of the organizations that we talk to is this is going to take an investment. It's a clear path forward, but investing in the people and technology and then your personal commitment to see it through is really important. Number two, have a data strategy. And you heard model less, iterate more. And you heard some of the earlier speakers talking about that. Just get started, right? We're going to learn from the experience. Don't sit there and try to have this macro kind of two-year plan. Let's start. Let's get started. Let's learn from that and build on that experience. And so having a strategy around data and then iterating along the way is going to be really important. And number three, put all your data to work. So there's data coming out inside the enterprise, kind of the social data that we mentioned, kind of data from all sources. How do you harness that data for competitive advantage? And at the end of the day, we think that will help, help drive success. So I wish you all well in your journey. We're excited to be a part of it. And uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to uh, talk with you.